Hello my soccer universe, as the sun sets on this day I'm completing the, uh, making the fifth video and I have not done five video reviews in a long 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 time and I don't plan to do it again however I really want to be caught up with everything so the starting next week we're back to normal scheduling with two max three videos uh, at the beginning of each week given that there's European commitments yeah it's gonna be busy anyway we're talking Serie A and you see me wearing here a Milan jersey and smiling after all the negative videos. And I mean, let's face it, the last few videos that I made uh, on Serie A were all negatively tinged because Milan were just horrific. However, in the door we already saw a slight turnaround how Pioli wanted to get the defensive crisis into check. And now here we see three 1-0 victories later and Malik Jar being one of the outstanding players for Milan and in Serie A. Pretty impressive stuff, I gotta say. Not good yet, not good yet. We'll talk about the games, but it is a little bit of a turnaround. But now come, now you gotta deliver because the next two games will show if Milan did improve. Um, up top, nothing really new. I mean, Inter dropped uh, more points, meaning Napoli surely now is top and will win the title. They are champions elect with an incredible 15 point cushion already. And at the moment with the best record in Europe. But of course the question is, and the Champions League will answer, are they the best team in Europe at the moment? They're surely, I would argue that the most exciting one. Only Barcelona have a similar record. And as I said it already in the La Liga review, uh, Barcelona don't look convincing, but Napoli, uh, when they get going, they get going. And I even read that Ozyman uh, reached 100 career goals faster than Ronaldo and Messi. Not quite sure if I buy that stat, but it shows what an outstanding talent he is. But the player that really stands out for me is Quicha Quaraskelia. Uh, I love players like that. So unorthodox, but so good on their day. It's really fun to watch him and Napoli in the process. And yes, that Napoli jersey probably has to enter my collection. Another Napoli jersey is coming relatively soon. Spoiler alert. But you know, with Napoli so far uh, gone, the attention definitely turns now to the top four race where I would say Inter is a shoe in despite not looking convincing and also but having only a three point cushion. And then we have quite a few teams on 44, 42, 41 points. It's, it's basically four teams fighting for two spots and maybe Inter can't be dragged into it. Uh, and it's really in the way if you screw up, you fall down. It caught Lazio against Atalanta and then it caught Atalanta. Who is playing Atalanta next? Yeah, Milan. So you see it goes up and down. Roma also uh, dropping points. It's a mess. And the uh, fun fact is that Juve sitting in seventh. Yes, far away. But if they wouldn't have the 15 point penalty, they would be in a very comfortable second spot. Also, one of those notable things in Italy. But I would say let's start with Milan's turnaround against Torino. No, it was not a turnaround. This was an awful match and thankful, thankfully Milan played in their awful third jerseys where you barely could make them out. The first half was just atrocious, an atrocious watch. However, in the second half, they got things together and in, in, in the end Hernandez uh, serves Giroud, makes it 1-0 and then uh, Torino never really got any chances themselves. It was a really bad game that in a way Milan won uh, and probably could have won and even by more in the end. Uh, but not a performance to build upon. Uh, we had a rather interesting match. Usually, usually we won't talk about between Empoli and Spezia, a 2-2 draw. Uh, Parisi getting for getting a red card um, for a handball in the uh, um, in the 21st minute and then uh, Spezia using that to score twice uh, through Verde first one of penalty uh, in there and uh, you see you think every, everything is fine however uh, Esposito gets a yellow red just at the beginning of the second half and that allows Empoli to come back to Cambiaghi and then Vignato deep into stoppage time gets the equalizer as i said in the top four battle with milan winning then uh good news for them although you know i always say roma is my second favorite team um i think in the larger scheme of things they are still my second favorite team and i want to have them win but you know now they're in a battle with milan i hope that both actually 
both make it into, into the Champions League. If you were to ask me, that would make me the happiest. Um, Ibanez scores an own goal early. The uh, Dybala penalty equalizes, but Roma just did not look quite right and never, never really could uh, kick into the next gear. Um, Udine and Sassuolo play out an entertaining 2-2 draw. Monza continuing their good run at that point uh, with a 1-0 at Bologna. Bologna team that have been rather steady. The um, I completely forgot about Lazio against Atalanta. That was the biggest game on that weekend. And Atalanta completely outplayed Lazio. It was only level for, for just a few minutes, but then uh, Atalanta kicked in, in the next year. Zappa Costa and, of course, Erasmus Hoyland, who else uh, completely uh, destroying Lazio, getting a rather. This was a marker. You have very thought. Yeah, Atalanta is back. Atalanta can, 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 can make it. Shows you how long it lasts, but you know, this Atalanta team is. A different animal and it is still very very dangerous and i think a european spot for them is definitely in the cards but sorry for forgetting about that but i saw also juve against fiorentina where juve looked overall uh, convincing in the first half a brilliant assist by di maria to rabio gives them the one nil the ball just cleared behind the line so it was not uh, you know a satisfactory goal but Goal that technology clearly, clearly said, and then you really thought that Juve um, is gonna take it. Uh, Vlahovic seemingly scored a second, and then in the build up, there was an offside. But Fiorentina really uh, needed to work themselves in. I had a feeling that they're not really coming back, but then the last few minutes, they mount a, um, uh, an offensive, they get an equalizer through Castrovilli. Only for it to be called for offside as well. And I actually would have liked to see Fiorentina pick up that point. In the evening, this was just before Valentine's Day, and Napoli again against Cremonese came out in the Valentine's Kit, which did not work in, in the cup. And uh, it seemed a little bit shaky at the beginning, but Sus Quarazkelia makes it 1 0. There was only one winner. Uh, and in the end, Oziman doubles up, and Elmo scores a third. The scenes in the San, uh, San Paulo, or the Diego Maradona, I, I should say. Uh, just next level at this moment. Uh, it is really a joy to watch games of Na Napoli and they also score really nice goals. Uh, Verona get a big win over um, Salernitana to kind of keep them alive in the relegation battle. Uh, honestly, I think I think then Salentinas coach uh, Nicola was eventually fired after this, or so, but uh, it, it's one of those stories where actually the one coach that you want to have in a relegation battle is the one that you just fired because he met the miracle and now not. It's one of those weird Italian stories. And then Inter also threw points, and basically that nil nil uh, for Inter at Sampdoria basically meant Napoli, come take the title. Uh, congratulations. And it very much seemed so. Napoli then played the Friday game like Milan in order to prepare for the Champions League on Tuesday. And again, Kvaratskela takes the ball, runs through, it's 1-0 it's and Oziman makes the second one. It's 2-0 after half an hour. However, a uh, goal by Lorient Tebos and disallowed and uh, Sassuolo actually um, acquitted themselves overall well. But on the other side then, uh, Simeone was also called for offside. Napoli over really convincing again without overexerting themselves which probably is the most important for them uh bologna as i said get another win 2-1 at some Sampdoria, although it was a little bit um uh, sad for some Sampdoria because sabiri converts a penalty make it 1-1 and then just three minutes later he gets another penalty misses that that one or solini late on the winner then I gotta tell you a little bit about Monza against Milan. That was a game that after, you know, we had the Spurs game in between. Milan actually played defensively, especially quite well, and then uh, lay, lay down showed some signs. So I was not feeling that uh, negative anymore. Although, also gotta be said that uh, Milan uh, were definitely not having a turnaround. And Monza won a really, really good run. Before that, they uh, were quite, had, had, had quite the unbeaten streak. But then I knew Berlusconi in all these interviews, the new owner of Monza, that uh, Milan is in his heart. Monza is not there yet. He hopes for a draw, but you actually really felt that he wants more uh, Milan to win. This was always my hope that Monza actually will just roll over. They did not roll over. However, in the first half, 
After Monza gave Milan for five minutes some some trouble, then Milan took over and actually created chances. Uh, uh, and even Leao showed up for for, for for a change. In the end, it's only 1-0 at the half. I think it could have been more, despite a rather weird overall lineup again. Uh, I mean, yes, you want to give Gir uh, Giroud a break, so you start Origi, who was completely uh, a non-entity. And I'm also thinking that Brahim Diaz, yes, he scored the goal against Spurs, but did he, has he done much? Yeah, it was a little, a little bit, even Messias didn't play all that well. However, he scores the one goal. So I guess everything done right. Second half, Theo needs to make the second goal or either square it off to um, at 1.2 Leao. And then the game is done and does it. But then Monza really pressed Milan and created chances. And of course, the big one was when the... Um, a shot hit the post, it went onto the head of Tata Rosano. Oh no, the legs of Tata 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 Rosano down on the outside of the post and out. I mean, uh, it was as close as it, it could be, but at that point was also, yeah, okay. The stars aligned themselves for Milan. Again, you need to make the second goal. And then there were uh, two switches that didn't make any sense. Uh, first, Giroud coming on for Origi. Why not Slatan? And then even more Bakayoko coming off for Kronich. When Bakayoko came on, I was shivering. I thought it's gonna, that's not gonna work. And to see through the Ketelare missed a pretty big, big one. He was so frustrated. I think he just needs to get his goal because I really think the signs are there. It is coming. He could make something. This could be really a good player. I really believe in him. Just Pioli needs to believe in him too. I really feel that way. Then in the evening, Inter, a uh, big 3-1 win over Udine. Yes, it was 1-1 one, one to have, but most important for Inter fans, Lukaku back on the scoring machine, Henry Mkhitaryan and Mat Lator Martinez adding the other two. And so Inter at the moment, a clear second in the league. Then for the shock of the weekend, Atalanta losing at home to Lecce. That came out of nowhere. Atalanta seemed to be flying. However, uh, it was Tony Lecce. In the 74th minute, oh, Rasmus Hoyland only pulling one back just before the end. Uh, huge after Atalanta made this big marker in Rome. Losing at home to Lecce is a definite, definite letdown. Uh, Juve played horribly at Spezia and still managed to, uh, to win two by two, two goals. Uh, but let's talk first about Lazio, who win thanks to Immobile Brace, missing a Luis Alberto Pan, Pepe Pan penalty. I'm a little bit confused today. Uh, Di Maria and Moise Ken are the two goal, goal, goal scorers in the opposite uh, order. But it didn't look good at all. Uh, similar, Roma labored 1-0 win over um, Verona and Torino. Manage only a 2-2 draw against Cremonese. Cremonese team that still have not won so far. So, loads of action. I gotta say, uh, at the moment, it's mostly Milan and Napoli that I'm watching. And the rest is kind of so-and-so, unless there's a big game. Um, but with all that, Napoli, congratulations. You're the new Serie A champions. Uh, it looks really, really, really good for them. When we look at uh, who goes in, in the Ch Ch Champions League, it's definitely Inter. Milan now ahead of Roma, even and then Lazio Atalanta with some outside chances. On the bottom, Sampdoria and Cremonese seem to be gone. It's between Verona, Spezia and Salernitana uh, for going uh, down. Uh, if we look here and the expected standing, it's actually Spezia, Sampdoria and Cremonese. Uh, but you know, many things can happen. Juve will probably make it to Europe and you know I know they had a bad showing against Nantes but they could win the Europa League and then the Champions League as well which would actually be great for Italy if they have five teams in the Champions League but have my doubts. We have a few interesting upcoming fixtures. The biggest one is Milan against Atalanta because that is a market. If Milan, this is a must win action for both because Atalanta need to stay in the race. But if Milan wins that one, they have already a big cushion uh, uh, versus Atalanta. And it's also the head to head because the first game ended in a draw. So actually, you really don't want to, if you're Milan, you really don't want to lose to Atalanta because you don't want to lose the head to. Head. We also have a Turin Derby on Tuesday, so which allows me actually to kind of stretch out uh, the reviews and probably you get Wednesday morning my Serie A review. Uh, Bologna Inter, there was something. Yep, 
that could be that, that that's a trap game that's definitely a trap game there and then the week after we actually have quite a few interesting ones napoli lazio that's one of those traditional duels as is fiorentina against milan however it is roma juve that i have kind of framed this is such a classic uh with probably always a good atmosphere and then we have a uh, relegation classico between sampdoria and salernitana um yeah if any of these teams want to survive, they need to win. So yeah, a little bit of a shorter one, but as I said, my focus is maybe at this moment only on Milan and Napoli, not so much on the rest of Serie era because the tension is a little bit out of it. But I think that's enough to play for and I definitely will get into it. As I said, Serie is over my favorite league. In any case, please add anything that uh, you want in the comments below. Uh, if you or if you have a questions, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I'll surely talk to you soon about Serie A. Bye. Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.